MMA Meltdown on the Fight Network continues. I am Gabriel Morenci. Thanks to Robin Black. Very, very interesting conversation. And I was unaware that Robin was actually friends with Duke Rufus uh, when I asked Robin to, uh, to discuss this with me on the program. I wanted to speak to Robin about that because I know Robin has experience training newcomers into the sport at Extreme Couture. But uh, nevertheless, let's uh, bring in Joey Odessa. And we talked uh, with Robin about how uh, NCAA wrestlers, how high school wrestling coaches in America just beat the crap out of the kids. And, you know, that's, that's how they get to, to win national championships and become Johnny Hendricks and Cain Velasquez, uh, et cetera. But there's, there's a fine line, and it's always a gray area, and there's not two sides to every story. There's 16 sides to every story. And Joey Odessa is the best odds maker in the business, but he was also a pretty damn good wrestler as well. Uh, Joe, and I imagine your coach uh, used to beat the crap out of you guys, too. Yeah, you know, once you get to college to that level, you know, in Division One, particularly, you know, if you're at a top 10 program, top 20 program, like I've seen guys getting fist fights in the room, and the coach will just let it go. You know, he's just like, let these guys fight. And, uh, you know, it gets a little out of hand sometimes. Guys will pull each other off. But, you know, this is this is kind of a different, you know, a different situation. I don't like to use the word situation because now it's a problem. It's, it's you know, they need to, to resolve it. But the tragedy is that it was, you know, it was done in a, you know, somebody passed in an amateur kickboxing league. And I'm not for amateur MMA. Um, You know, it's called mixed martial arts for a reason because, you know, it's it's mixed. You know, and it's martial arts, not martial art. And, uh, you know, so I'm against that in general. And these guys, I mean, you know, granted it was kickboxing and, and a sport, it was still amateur. And maybe they're, you know, in hindsight, you know, it's always easy to jump and pile on and people come out of the woodwork. You know, it's tough. You know, I think there's some history there. There's probably some bad blood. Well, they weren't um, weird. You know, One thing I don't understand, Joey, is uh, if it's an amateur fight, where's the headgear? You know, amateurs are supposed to wear headgear. And I remember I went to see an amateur fight in Montreal. Great guy, a great young fighter, up and coming. I think he's uh, going to sign uh, actually with Titan or Legacy uh, soon to make his pro debut. And I saw him before the fight, and he was decked out. He not only had the headgear on, but he had the shin guards on too. And I said, what do you got all this stuff on for? You don't need it. And they said, no, his opponent does. And he kicked the crap out of his opponent. I mean, if you're an amateur, you're an amateur for a reason. And I don't like amateur fighting like, like you said, Joe. I got a problem with it to a certain extent. But the fighters need to be protected in an amateur setting, man. Yeah, I mean, it's, you know, looking at the video and not being there and not knowing the history with the kid. I mean, the kid, we don't know if the kid trained in the gym, if he was, if he was getting, you know, worked over in the gym, if he was, you know, to compare it to the, the movie Million Dollar Baby, you know, if he was just uh, the kid lightning, you know what I mean, who took the beat and, you know, took the beat. We don't know what goes on behind closed doors. I mean, there seems to be some history there. Fighters came out of the woodwork now and piled on a little bit. Pat Barry, uh, another girl. Chico Camus, I mean, he got asked to leave the camp in January, and, you know, because uh, I guess Duke said his commitment wasn't to the sport, wasn't, you know, he wasn't committed to excellence. You know, he, Duke just might run a tough camp, and this whole thing might be just a gigantic tragedy, but that's, you know, what the courts are going to have to work out, and it is a tragedy. I mean, for the family, for everybody involved, I, you know, watching from a distance, you know, you could see signs that the kid was hurt, but you really don't know what's going on in someone's head, what was said in the corner, things like that. There's so many things that, you know, I guess the, the tape was submitted to the police and they'll have to sort it out in the courts. And, you know, somebody, you know, in this day and age, if somebody's not liable, I mean, people sue for, you know, hot McDonald's coffee. I don't know how, you know, there's not something there. Or, you know, people are going to go after, you know, it's going to be settled in some sort of a civil court. I don't know how much... Uh, you know, how much negligence was there on the part of the referee or the doctor or the time it took. But there's something, you know, where there's smoke, there's fire, there's something there, and maybe these guys need to cool their jets a little bit and take a step back. But, you know, the sad thing is it reflects bad upon MMA, mixed martial arts in general, you know, when something like this happens. And, and the worst part, forget about MMA. I mean, somebody passed away in there, somebody that was an amateur that, you know, again, I don't know – what the what the kid's story was going into that whether he's a good or bad kid nobody deserves to die in the ring nobody desires to, you know deserves to die at that age you know participating in a voluntary sport period uh, Joey Odessa with us and yeah it's, it's such a complicated story that I don't think we have enough time to cover all the angles uh, we should note that uh, Anthony Pettis is actually a co-owner uh, of this uh, gym as well and uh, financially there could be some severe ramifications in the future but somebody lost their life and not the time to be talking about uh, civil lawsuits 
uh, right now. Uh, Joey, it is the time to be talking about Frankie Edgar and Cub Swanson. And I mentioned earlier in the show, I, I kind of let my friendship with Gray Maynard affect my, uh, my view of Frankie. I've always respected him as a fighter, but, you know, I was buddies with Gray and they didn't like each other. So I didn't like Frankie, so to speak. But I've got a ton of respect for him. And it's funny because I always used to bet against him and lose. And then suddenly, Joey, you turned and you bet against Frankie a couple of times. And it always surprised me because you love the New York guys. You're a New York guy. You love the wrestlers. Frankie's a wrestler. Frankie Edgar's everything you love in a fighter. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, it's just, you know, he lost three in a row there. He lost to Benson twice and then he lost to Aldo. And, you know, those fights with Gray, I mean, Frankie's, uh, you know, looking at this fight, Frankie's got, uh, what, he's got 21 fights, and, you know, Cub, he's, he's, uh, he's older than Cub, and uh, he, he started his career later than Cub. And, you know, Cub's got, uh, Jesus, what was it here? I saw some stat here. 20, he's 21 and 5, but, you know, he's been fighting since 2004, you know, and, and his losses are not, you know, he's got losses to respectable guys. I mean, his last loss was to Ricardo Lamas, which just, uh, just upset Dennis Bermudez. And what a lot of people thought wasn't an upset. And before that, he lost to Aldo and uh, Pulver in the WEC and Mendez. So this is a fight that, you know, you don't know how much. Look what happened to Gray. I mean, uh, you know, with all respect to Gray, I mean, these wars take so much out of you. Yeah. And Frankie's been hit so many of them that, you know, Cub, it pains me because, you know, I'm a big Frankie Edgar fan, but Cub. How can you lay a price? You, you can't lay a price with Edgar. My, the line just freaks me out. I don't understand this one. We say it a lot. I don't get this one. And I, I completely agree with everything you just said. Cub Swanson is fresher. He hasn't fought a lot recently. He's picking his spots. And Frankie Edgar, those emotional roller, you know, he won. He won the trailer. All right, you got the best of gray, but you lost a lot of skin in that, my man. And then the, the Benson Henderson just deflated him mentally and then losing the belt to opportunity to Aldo. I think I think Cubs in a better spot. I can't believe the, the show is gone already here, Joey. We only got about 30 seconds or so, but I like Cub Swanson. I don't even care about the line. I like Cub Swanson if this fight's a pick 'em. Yeah, I mean I'm not, you know, I think I can make a case for Cub winning the fight. Um, you know, going down the card in thirty seconds, you know, Bobby Green coming in here at pick 'em. Got to like Bobby Green. And then we got the big question marks on uh, Camus and Dustin Ortiz. You know, both are coming into the bouts as dogs out of Rufus Camp. I don't know what effect it, this drama is going to have on them, but uh, it's tough to like those guys in the, in the dog position this week. Yeah, I know. Ortiz is such a badass uh, going up against Benavides. You know, he's 3-1 and one his last four fights. You could argue that he actually beat a real tough gangster uh, in John uh, Moraga. Moraga. All right, so yeah, let's, we got to wrap it up. Uh, but your boy uh, Jared Rochold here, minus 220. Lay the price. I, you know, I think so. I think it should be higher. I, I don't make much of the uh, of the Russian. I, you know, he's 37 years old. He's got 40 submissions. But is he going to submit the uh, the winning is the most winning is wrestler at heavyweight in uh, Oklahoma State history? I don't think so. Yeah, the guy's 49, nine and one. Alexei Olenek, uh, 49, nine and one. A lot of tomato cans. He's lost to like average. Subs. Yeah, he's lost to sort of average guys over the years. Uh, Rochelle's showing me something here. It ain't pretty, but he's getting it done, Joey. Well, he can wrestle. He is a three-time All-American at heavyweight, fifth most wins in Oklahoma State history. You know, if he gets in maybe a little bit better MMA shape, uh, which I hope he is for this bout, he wins his bout for fun. But uh, he's got to avoid submissions. That's, and I, I don't see him getting submitted. I mean, he'll be well prepared. All right, we got to uh, we got to wrap it up. Unfortunately, me and Joey are going to break down. Uh, you know, we break down all the prelims. We break down everything every Tuesday night at 10 o'clock on Sirius XM. Channel 167, presented by the Fight Network MMA uh, Meltdown Radio. We'll come back with our uh, video of the week.